Okay, how's everybody doing out there? My name is Melvin Eisen. I'm your favorite producer for Brick Arts Medium. And we are here today again filming at Brick, downtown Brooklyn on Fulton Street, right off of Rockwell. So uh, this morning I have a, a very, a very extinguished guest from the uh, Dorsey Art Gallery. And uh, she's one of uh, Art O'Neill's students. And I know her because I became uh, a student of Art O'Neill, too, and that's how I ran into uh, Diane. But she's going to tell you her full name, and so uh, I don't want to hold anybody back now. So here we are. Diane, tell me who you are and what's your name, and, you know, before we get started. Oh, my name is Diane Grisette Collins, and mm -hmm. I live in uh, Bed-Stuy, uh, Brooklyn. Your family would use to describe you. Uh, dependable, uh, sincere, and uh, witty. And how would you describe yourself? Dependable, sincere, and witty. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What inspired you to wake up every morning? Um, every morning I wake up inspired to try something new, to discover something new about myself, and to accomplish some new goals. Who would you say it inspired you throughout your life to become an artist? I grew up at a time where becoming an artist wasn't anything to aspire to, so I can't say that anyone um, inspired me to become an artist it was something that I always felt within myself. Um, there wasn't any artist around me, in my family, or um, there was art in the form of maybe sewing and cooking and things like that, but in terms of uh, creating a painting or someone writing or something like that, that was not there. There was no pattern for that, so me doing something like that was, um, was foreign, and uh, I couldn't say that it was encouraged Deliberately, yeah. What are your challenges? To find, to know that becoming an artist is something to aspire to, especially when, um, you know, as I said, it wasn't something um, that was ingrained or encouraged in me earlier. So to know that it was something worthwhile to aspire to is, is, is a challenge, and to know that you can take it in so many directions, I know that now that. You know, you could take your art in many, many directions, something which, um, a knowledge which I wished that I had before, but I'm happy that I have it now. Okay, so those were your challenges that you struggled with, mm -hmm. that you actually to, struggled with, and continue to struggle with. And to with. continue to struggle with, to know that when I sit down to create a piece of art, mm -hmm. that this is a time that is worthwhile, and this is an endeavor worth pursuing and a project worth completing. And how long have you been an artist? Um, how long have I been an artist? Mm -hmm. I can't say. I've always been interested in making things since I was little. But in terms of calling myself an artist and feeling comfortable with that, I still struggle with that. Okay, so that's part of this second question with what, you know, what are you dealing with that is a struggle as far as becoming and artists, what is your challenges? So that's part of that too. That's that's definitely. Yeah. I was self-taught, and then I was fortunate enough to come across the Fulton Art Fair, and at that time meet Otto Neils. However, I largely um, taught myself, and Otto was helping to bring out those finer points. I still like painting with. Um, a more unfinished bent to my art. I don't like things exactly matching, perfectly done, equally balanced, and all of that. That sort of makes me nervous. I like when there's a little unfinished stuff left for the viewer to finish off in their own mind. Tell me, who are you, and what is your purpose in life? Well, my purpose in life, I'm still trying to um, figure that out. Um, 
once again, I'm a kind, sensitive, de extremely dependable and uh, witty person. And in terms of uh, my purpose in life, when I was small, I've always wanted to be a great mom. And I knew that deep down inside, and I never thought I would get the opportunity to be a mom. And I had my uh, only child late. He came as a wonderful surprise. I was 48 years old when I learned that I was going to have a son. And that was my greatest um, purpose, and to enjoy, as I call it, mommy dumb to oh. the to the fullest. Um, okay. Just creating and growing a human being is a very difficult challenge, and I enjoyed it every absolute second, even when he was getting on my nerves. He never got on my nerves because I know it was all part of the growing process and I thought it was amazing and wonderful and I have yet to find something that could match that experience. So I'm trying to get back to my art and get that same exhilaration that I had in raising my son who's now 19. Mm. Thank you very much for allowing me to interview you, Diane. Yes. And I uh, really appreciate this and uh, thank you very much. You've seen the Black Panther already, correct? I saw it twice. You've seen it twice. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it the other day once. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought it was amazing. It, it left a lot of messages, you know. So, uh, and it did inspire me to what I'm doing. But I want to ask you this. Tell me uh, what message that you you seen they left. That's you, not anybody else. Because... People come up with all kinds of stuff. Oh, it's political. This is no, that's them. But tell me about you, Diane. What message that? And you've seen it twice, so something must be there, mm -hmm. you know. So talk about that. The message and why did you see it twice? I saw it twice um, because it went by so fast the first time. I was really amazed at uh, mm -hmm. just seeing everything, and I wanted to slow it down by seeing it a second time. And I saw it the second time because I like what the opening words were. It, it kind of goes right past you. Mm -hmm. It's a child asking, I believe, his father a question. And it says, tell me your story. And that's, mm. that's how it starts. Mm. And the, the power of story and how stories explain beginnings and origins and give you history and you pass things down. And stories are so powerful. So when... I hear that voice tell me a story. There was a little child saying, tell me a story. Mm. And you got the, the, the beginnings, you went through the end, and you saw the future. And that's what stories do. They comfort us, they give us information, they empower us. And when um, I had my son, I read to him every single night from the time he was like six months old all the way up to like we were, he was a teenager. We were reading the New York Times together. We were reading the Newsweek and mm -hmm. doing all of that. And not one day escape where, and he would say, Mama, tell me a story. Mm -hmm. And when the Black Panther opened with tell me a story, mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And then it went on to give this amazing and powerful mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to see it okay. again. Yeah. Wow. So the message was? A story is Stories. important. St story. It, yes. it gives you strength. It gives yes. you history and okay. empowers you. Okay. It reminds you of uh, where you came from, mm -hmm. and uh, it strengthens you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and the storyteller is key. I mean, back in the olden days, the yeah. storyteller was a very powerful figure mm -hmm. in the community. Now we have you know, all sorts of things yeah. telling our stories, but we have to tell our own story, and that's what happened in that go. movie. Yes. But when it opened up with the little child saying, mm -hmm. tell me a story, I was off mm -hmm. and running. That was it for me. Coincidence. Uh, you are telling your story now. Yeah. Just what you just said. Mm -hmm. We have to tell. Our own. So as, as being on this show here, on the Artistic Talent Show, you are actually revealing your story mm -hmm. and telling your story and sharing yeah. it to me, to the world. Yeah, it's a good story, it's too. It's very powerful, I'm telling you. Very powerful. Yeah. So I want to share with you something that you shared with us when you was at the Fulton Art Fair. I've been painting or 
taking part in you know if you can remember that artful activities yes. since uh, I was a child yes, and yes, I joined with the yes, Dorsey yes. Gallery and my mentor well, I thought that was Eels, interesting because you have a lot of stuff that you improve, want to uh, you was telling the stories mm-hmm. on my on that as well you realistic know. paintings so uh, basically that's the background in, uh, that we are paintings. showing and these uh, four pieces are part which of is Diane Collins at the Fulton Art Fair. I believe it was in uh, uh, just 2016. Just a certain freedom. A couple of years yeah. back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was interviewing everyone that came to shape. you. And you start telling your story the about... The art that you're looking at you know, is part of an um, abstract this particular series situation, of yeah. I thought that was pretty good. Is so I just wanted to share that with you, you uh, know, mm-hmm. that particular it's background there and the story abstract, that you were sharing uh, with us, expressing you a certain know, freedom and 